Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well. Today as we come to our word from the word, and today that word is doom. Doom. Now, doom and gloom, right? I know even as yesterday was the eclipse, and you think that's what everybody was thinking, doom and gloom was coming, and, and yet the eclipse came and went. Well, there again. Now, as we're moving on uh, to the book of Amos now, and as we're going through the prophets, you notice kind of a common theme of doom and gloom. But you remember there's always that thread of, of hope and that picture of hope for the remnant, those that would believe, those that would remain faithful. So today as we find Amos and as we uh, dive into this as we have uh, the previous books before it, just to think about that here we have uh, basically like a shepherd, a sheep um, herder and he, some would say he was a little bit more than just a shepherd. He was one that was really more of a herdsman. Uh, but in any case, so here you have this guy that's that's working and the Lord says, hey, I've got something for you. I've got a word that I want to give you to share. And so he is doesn't even really claim to be a prophet uh, like the other prophets, but still knows that he has a word from the Lord to share. So being a Southerner, um, a Southern Israelite there in Judah, he his, his word is mostly for the northerners. And so he finds himself there speaking against Israel. But he also is speaking against, as you'll find in really in the first two chapters, against all the nations and against all the areas around. And he's telling them there's doom to come. And, and so he gives the really the theme for the whole book can be found right here in these first two verses. Uh, the first verse is an introduction and, and it dates it well for so we know the time and what's going on. And then he says simply in one verse what the Lord has said. So let's look. Amos chapter one, verses one and two. The words of Amos, who was among the sheep breeders of Tekoa which he saw concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, two years before the earthquake. Now that'll give you, that'll give you some direct timing right there. Verse 2, And he said, The Lord roars from Zion and utters his voice from Jerusalem. The pastures of the shepherds mourn and the top of Carmel withers or caramel however you want to say it the top of mount carmel what he's saying there he gives us the time frame and even from uh zachariah um it gives us the earthquake that happened there with king uzziah so you look at about 762 bc i believe um but somewhere in that in that 8th century bc as you're looking um to what the time frame of what's going on now as he as he comes to say, these are the words that the Lord has given me. This is what I have seen, this, this vision of sorts that he has seen. And he says, look, the Lord is roaring from Zion. And it's almost as if the Lord is shouting, almost uh, as if he's roaring like that roaring lion saying, I mean, you, you think about hearing a roaring lion. Could you imagine if you heard that? It's one thing to hear it at the zoo. But could you imagine being out in the wild and hearing that from a distance? And you know right away, my fate is sealed. There is no hope for me. And as we hear the Lord roar, it's almost like that roar or that clap of thunder that we know the storm is coming. The storm is near. It's nearing and it's coming closer. That's what it was, not just for Israel, not just for Judah, but for all of the nations. Why? Right? What did they have in common? Sin. And for most, we know, as we've looked at it countless times, it has been the sin of idolatry. It has been the sin of relying on themselves and not relying on God. But yet here he's saying that the lion, the, the lion from the tribe of Judah, right? He doesn't say that, but I, I love that that reference to uh, the lion roaring, to think about that roaring that it could come from the lion of the tribe of Judah, to, to say that they're all going to be mourning, right? He says from the lowland to the top of Mount Carmel that everyone is going to be mourning and weeping. Well, why is that? 
it is because the Lord is about to pour out destruction on them. And it says that the, the Lord was going to basically is going to dry up the land. And you'll see as we go along and, and, and some of the things that he talks about, the way that the Lord was going to make sure that they knew he was in control. And he is God, not just of Israel, not just of that part of the world, but that he is God of all creation and that he is God of all the earth. Now, don't think that just because we're starting in the book of Amos with the word doom, that that means that we're not going to have anything to, to give us hope. Because as long as there is still breath in our lungs, there is still hope. There is still hope that we can that we can make a difference, that God will make a difference in us and God will make a difference through us for others. So we can be excited to know that Amos has had an impact on somebody in the course of time, that every prophet had an impact on somebody. So even though they proclaimed the message of doom, and even today as you and I are called to proclaim, thus saith the Lord, and and let people know that the end is near and that Jesus is coming back. We can preach that message of doom, but it does not have to be a message that is without hope. Because our hope is in Jesus. And our hope is in the truth and the fact of the empty tomb that we just celebrated here at Easter. Our hope is found in nothing less than Jesus Christ. Today... Don't get down in the dumps over the doom. Let that doom drive you to share the good news of the gospel. God bless you, and I pray you have a great, great day.